Our fifth and last essential is straight line path of the rod tip. Now the line always follows the path of the rod tip, therefore if you can get that rod tip travelling in a really nice straight line and employ crisp absolute stops, you're going to get some really nice loops. Now this essential is closely related to essential number three, which was our variable casting arc. In most cases, a tight loop is desirable, however not always, and that's actually what this film is all about. However, a tight loop is aerodynamically much more efficient than a large rounded loop. It's easier to control and it's also much more accurate. Large rounded loops are more difficult to control and are more air and wind resistant. Large rounded loops are created when we scribe a big convex arc with the rod tip. Here's a little tip, if you find yourself getting caught up in the grass behind you, it's a sure sign that you're dropping your rod tip back far too far on the back cast. Try casting up higher, aim right up into the sky on the back cast, should clear things up. Another path the rod tip can travel is the concave path. This rod tip path leads to closed or tailing loops and will end up in tangles and flies hitting the rod. So here's a recap of our five essentials. Straight line path of the rod tip, casting stroke, short line, short stroke, long line, long stroke, power application, smooth acceleration into a crisp stop, timing, short line, short pause, longer line, longer pause. Slack line, keep it to a minimum, you must keep things under tension at all times. Right, that's the theory out of the way. And now that we know what governs loop shapes and how to make a really nice cast, we're going to see how many of those rules we can break.